Hello everybody, this is Anna on Revelry known as Anna Nitta. Our group on Revelry has the same name, Anna Nitta. Be welcome. And on Instagram, my name is Annalena Nitta. I am back after a long time of not podcasting because of being ill two weeks and being very, very busy with a, with a young dog, which, yes, it's crazy. <laughs> very crazy. Uh, I didn't expect it to be that weird but it's okay <laughs> i'm back again and um during this time during the last four or five weeks i did not podcast i received so many nice private messages on ravelry and very kind comments comments on instagram i'm very grateful that you didn't forget me after so much uh so yes yeah, so much time not podcasting and uh, at this point, I want to say thank you to Nina. She mentioned me on her podcast. Thank you very much. And also, so sweet, Violet mentioned me on her podcast. And I didn't know it till someone wrote me on Revelry. And after that, I said, oh my goodness, that's why I have so many subscribers in this week. <laughs> I always receive an email when somebody subscribe, subscribes my podcast and I received so many emails da -da -da, um, subscribed your podcast da -da -da, subscribed da -da -da, subscribed and I thought why I'm not active at this moment and why are so many people at this time are subscribing and now I know it's because of um, you two mentioned my podcast and your podcast. Thank you very much. And so sweet Violet, to you if you are watching, I love your podcast. You all, you have this, uh, I don't know, uh, let me think about how to say it in English. Mm. This, in, in German we say Landhausstil and I think word by word translated, no, not word by word, but this countryside, cozy, comfy, lovely, pink style <laughs> i hope you know what i mean i don't know how to how to say it correct in english that you understand me but i f i feel very cozy watching your podcast i love it okay subscribers we have 154 subscribers uh today till now um i think it's cool <laughs> thank you for subscribing and we have a winner in our fall along. She already, I already wrote it down in our group and we contacted each other and I shipped the prize out yesterday. It's on Ravelry, a uh, woman in a shoe. It's Mel from Australia. So cool to ship Austri Austrian yarn to Australia because sometimes it happened it happens that the postmen or the post postal offices I don't know uh, mix these two up so they mix up Austria with Australia so it can happen that they are confused and what uh, a parcel or a letter that should go to Austria comes to Australia first and then they realized oh no it's the wrong country <laughs> but I think in this case from Austria to Australia it won't happen I hope you enjoy the yarn and yeah okay I think oh yes let's start with um, finished objects I didn't knit a lot the last weeks because I, w I was ill and being ill with a young, uneducated dog, <laughs> it's it was very stressful and and exhausting, and I didn't want to knit. So I can't show you that much of knitting this week. But I finished one sock. I already posted it on Instagram. It's out of All Hallows Eve soft sock yarn, colorway All Hallows Eve base soft sock from Molly from a homespun house and oh my gosh it's so soft it's really soft sock 
this is the guy. Um, the first time I used, tell me, yes, normally I use 64 stitches and this one has a 50, 54, yes, 54 stitches, but two and a half millimeter needles because now I'm using normally 2.0 needles but 64 stitches and I wanted to check how I could manage knitting with 2.5 um, and less stitches and it worked it worked I think it's very very pretty it's much prettier in person the colors are more full they are fuller more orange but and, and warmer <laughs> it's because of my light I should buy some I don't know how the technique freaks call them so you know soft light background stuff you know this pro stuff <laughs> for podcasting yes okay the, it's my only finished object it's a half finished object but it's okay so we can go over to whips. I cast it on immediately after finishing this sock, the second Molly sock. And it's a hot mess. <laughs> Let me see, what did I do? Ah, okay. <clears throat> I already turned the heel. It's not, it's not much till starting mm, the toe. <laughs> yes, I could do this uh, at one evening, but in one second you will see why I'm not finished already. <laughs> okay, this is my first whip. And there will be much left for adding um, a square on my cozy memory, stitch and time blanket, and swapping minis. Okay, the second one is the Gnome Acres Stars Hollow sock. 2.0 needles and 64 stitches. I already turned the heel. And I don't know what to say any, um, about it. You know, knitting socks is not rocket science. <laughs> okay. I think because of the dark or wine red uh, and the glitter you can say it's autumn and an autumn and Christmassy sock it reminds me on Christmas I don't know why but it's perfect because I'm already in my Christmas mood <clears throat> okay and my first um, Cast on for the 12 socks of Christmas from Sarah, Love Sockwool Podcast, is Annie and Carlos, and jetzt, and now, and jetzt, <laughs> it's, it's English again. Let me see if there is a name. No. <laughs> like always in the German speaking countries, it's 493. The color. No, 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 it's the lot. I'm sorry. The color is 03760. That's the way it will look. And I think it looks Christmassy, Scandinavian Christmassy, wintry, cozy. It's Christmassy for me. The Scandinavian knits are always Christmassy for me. And it's as well not only a whip, it's an acquisition. I bought it last week when I was in Vienna. I only was going to buy two more sets of 2.0 needles because 12 socks of Christmas you will need a lot of needles. Hmm. And then I saw this ball of yarn and I thought come home with me. <laughs> okay I said my first um, Christmas cast on would be Deck the Halls from Wollenwein, which I received from 
lovely Nina, but I was uh, visiting friends in Vienna and I didn't have uh, the deck the holes with me, but I wanted to cast on a Christmas sock, so I bought it and cast on. Okay, that's all. That's all I knit in the last four or five weeks. I'm so sad to say this to you because you were waiting um, to to uh, you are waiting for a new release podcast and all I can show you are three socks. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But it was a very hard time the last weeks. It was a very, very hard time. I love my dog, but there were days I thought I have to give him away because it's too much for me. But I have very kind and lovely and nice friends and neighbors and they helped me when I was ill. They went out with him. In German we say um, to go gassi, so to go outside so that he can potty, <laughs> go potty. And there was especially one person who told to me that I should try it with, with a dog because I would regret it when I give him away. And I think it was right. It was hard. I wanted to hear, yes, give him away. You tried it, but it's not, it's not good for you. That's what I wanted, wanted to hear. But he told me, you have to try it. You only have him two or three weeks at this moment. You can't tell anything about the future. He's small. It's not his fault. Try, try on. And it was right. Even now, there are days... Um, I think, oh, it's so complicated with the dog. When I want to go, for, when I go somewhere for a weekend or, or only for, uh, for the day, for many hours, I have to think, when can I go outside with him to make him tired that he is sleeping when I'm away or... Is there someone who can watch for the dog when I'm away? It's very difficult because there is no one. I thought I would have one, but it's not anymore. It's not possible anymore. And so I have to do it on my own. And it's okay. It was my choice, but it's very hard. But then when I go um, for a walk with him or when he sleeps on my feet and he does it always when I'm sitting on, uh, on my desk, um, I, in, in, when I'm working on my computer or when I'm reading for my for studying, he comes on my feet and sleeps and he, oh, how do you say snur? You know, <laughs> he does this when he sleeps. And sometimes he rolls on his back, feet high and is, I don't know, shivering <laughs> and, and does funny noises. And these moments are very, very nice. Or when he sleeps on my sofa, when I'm watching TV and he, he sleeps on his blanket on my sofa next to me. Then I think, okay, there are also these beautiful and fulfilling moments. But yes, on the one hand and on the other hand, pro and contra, but I decided to have this dog and I don't regret it, but it's not that easy as I thought. Okay. Um, acquisitions you don't uh, see now. One acquisition was Ani and Carlos. But I ordered at Gnome Acres. I ordered, I wrote it down for you. Uh, where I, yes, I ordered fruitcake, the Christmas color. Then I ordered chai. It's a, a mixture of white and creams. Uh, pumpkin spice. I ordered pumpkin spice. I didn't have... Uh, I don't have it yet. It's nearly over this season, but I think also in Christmas season you can drink pumpkin spice latte and eat pumpkin pie and all that stuff. 
I ordered the Christmas minis. And oh yes, and from Molly from a homespun house, I ordered Kevin. I love the Kevin films. I love those three films. Three. No, two. Uh, in New York and Home Alone, genau. Uh, yes, <laughs> in English again. Yes, and she released a colorway um, which the, which has the name I can't put my arms down. And I I uh, read it on Instagram and I thought I can't put my arms down. It reminds me on a German uh, movie. It's not German, but I watched it in German. And but wasn't there a scene so uh, i asked her and sh she um, answered very kindly thank you molly and i searched on google and found the film and it was the film my family and me watched long long time ago and there was one quote of the film we said we quoted over and over and over again in all the years there is a mother and she is a full-time mother and has to take care for the whole family and when they are eating she has to cut for the the I don't know the the food for the son or for the for her children and then her husband wants something and he wants something and she wants something and she always has to eat her her dishes cold because she is taking care for all those uh, people in her, uh, for all her family members, and um, she, and in this time, her dishes gets cold, and she says, in German, ich habe seit 15 Jahren kein warmes Essen gehabt. I didn't have a, a warm dish since 15 years, and I, my my father always quoted this this woman when we talked about caring for families and the responsibility of parents and so on and I knew in this film was a scene the mother put on um, very warm clothes and hats and scarves and mittens and pullover and jackets on her son <laughs> for, for playing in the snow and the son is outside and he wants to play and he is so wrapped into warm things that he can't put his arms down. <laughs> and in German, uh, he only say, says, "Ich kann mich nicht mehr bewegen. I can't move anymore." And when I wrote, uh, when I read the hmm, post from Molly and the the colorway name, "I can't put my arms down," I immediately thought it has to be that movie I'm searching so long and she ha she was right it was the movie um, I was searching and it's so perfect and now I want to um, order this colorway <laughs> but I think I have to wait because I ordered a lot and the next acquisition will be today or tomorrow I will get a yarn swift because now I have so much indie dyed yarn because I don't uh, mind the shipping cost anymore because there's no other way to get these nice yarns. <clears throat> I, I not don't mind it. I I mind the shipping costs and the duty. The duty is horrible. I am. Um, I I I'm curious how it will be with the Gnome Acres order. Last time I had to pay, I think around twenty or twenty five euro only duty. So, okay, thank you Molly for this colorway because now I know the film and I can watch it again because I'm already watching Christmas movies. <laughs> I think I watched three movies until now. Okay, my plans. I want to knit. I have the yarn here. <laughs> it's Cardiff Kashmir. I bought this um, yarn last season, last winter. And I wanted to, oh no, what's the English word? Not mittens, not mittens, without, you know, this, only the, hmm, oh, wrath warming wrath, or arm wrath, wrath warming arms, you know, in German we say stulpen, <laughs> uh, when you only knit the leg from the sock without the foot. <laughs> But for the arms. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, but now I think I want to knit a hat out of it because in a few seconds you will see a scarf um, which has brown in it and I want to have a matching hat. I have one matching hat but I want to have a matching hat in brown also. And I searched the internet. You are also, you are all um, so happy about the socket head, but I don't like the fit of it. There is slouch, but it's just hanging around. And I always wear a ponytail or my hairs are up like this. Hmm? And when I wear normal hats, it looks like an alien hat. <laughs> And I don't want to look like an alien, so I need a head with a lot of slouch over there so that I can put all my long hair into the head without looking like an alien. And I found a head, it's called Socky Slouchy Head and it's by Laureen Sanchez. I think maybe I'm able to put a link here or I will just throw it down where you can find it. I found it on Ravelry and this will be a knit this winter. I really need a um, head which is which fits right on the ears because I only need the heads for my ears because when my ears get cold I it's very hurting. Oh how is it called in English? I had I don't know middle ear infection when it's fired in in the ears it's so hurting and i don't want to have it anymore but i have it one i had it once and since then my ears are very uh sensitive in cold air okay and now we come to the scarf i told you in the last episodes i had the segment things i knit but i don't wear and now we have the seg segment things I knit and I now wear. <laughs> Last year I made my dream come true and I knit a set of a hat and a long long scarf knit out of 100% uh, alpaca and this is the hat. I don't like the crown. I would so love and the slouchy hat I uh, searched for doesn't has this this type of crown and I, I hope it works. I wanted to have it flat, you know. Okay, that's the head. And you see, I will turn around. Oh, there's a lot of slouch and everything fits in the, you know, head. And this is the scarf. It's the same color, but I added brown stripes. It's two meter and 20 20 centimeters long. I think I knit it a bit less than two meters, but it's uh, alpaca is very heavy, so it hangs out. But it's okay. A long, I, I love long scarves. I knit it in seed stitch. No, moss stitch. Yes, moss stitch. Um, I will try to show you. I will go right in front of the camera. <laughs> yes, you can see. But the negative thing about this scarf is I didn't expect alpaca to be scratchy. I watched an episode of the podcast of Molly, A Homespun House, and I think it's many months, maybe a year ago, I don't know. I watched her and she said for some people alpaca is the softest yarn on earth and for other people it's too scratchy. And I thought when I had the yarn in my hands, oh my gosh, it's it's like cloud. It's so soft and so pretty and perfect and I held it on my um, next to my skin and I didn't feel any any scratch. But the scarf is a bit scratchy as a scarf, yes. So normally I'm wearing things like this uh, in the winter and then I have the scarf over it 
and then it's okay. But I wouldn't wear it right next to my skin. After knitting so much <laughs> and then recognizing it's scratchy, it was a bit I was a bit disappointed. And I will do another one someday in the future and then I will knit it out of cashmere or merino. I don't know. So that I can wear it also next to my skin. Okay, and because of the brown stripes, I added the brown stripes because I thought I don't have enough to knit a scarf only from the red, wine red. I don't know if it would have been enough, I don't think. But I think it's nice. It's not that boring. So this is the same. And I think oof, the brown would match also. Okay. Things I knit and I now wear. <laughs> I was so uh, excited when I um, took it out of my cupboard to wear it. And today it's so frosty outside. The roofs and the tops of the trees and the yards <laughs> are white only because of the frost frost frosty frost is it? do you say frost in english you know what i mean it's so frosty outside and i love it i love autumn and i love winter i love every season but i don't know there's something about autumn and winter i love it all the cozy memories i think okay <laughs> yes, I want to do a knit along again. And I want to have it season related again, like the fall along. And I don't know I don't know yet how to call it and how we want to have the rules. Where we say Christmas along, Advent along, winter along. Hmm. I have to think about it. I I still have to think about it, but I want to have something Christmas, winter, season related. Yes. Okay. In the meantime, I will show you what I did instead of knitting the last weeks to come down and to, to be calm. In the last month, I, mm, I needed something to relax without having a purpose because with knitting it's for me a bit difficult not to see the goal of finishing the project i come down with knitting and it relaxes me it calms me down but sometimes it can be stressful for me because i want to have this or that project finished by then because then I will need it, then I want to have it. Yes. And a few months ago I really needed kind of, I don't know, flow moments. I don't know if you heard of this word. You should, you should uh, google it. It's, it's very interesting. If you have, if you are in a flow, flow moment, you you are relaxed you're concentrated of what you're doing but not too much to be exhausted but enough to not think about what you're doing it's difficult to explain google it um, wikipedia is your best friend And I, when I was a child, I loved to color and to play with colors and, and, and cut out something and stick together and yes. And I'm a little bit like a child <laughs> still. 
I think it's okay. I love to hear audio plays and audiobooks, as I told you before. And coloring is still a thing I really like. Um, normally I'm um, making the Christmas and Easter cards by myself. And it's like being a child, you know, there's the glue and, and cutting out and decorating and stickers and, and so on. And I enjoy it every year. And then a few years ago, the trend of coloring books for adults arrived. And I think 2014, I heard about it and I thought, oh, coloring books. Oh, I would love to color again. And in the next moment I thought, no, it's a waste of time, you can learn a language in that time, or you can knit something, you can wear, you have a purpose. But I ordered my first coloring book from Joanna Besford, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you heard about her. Um, mein Verzauberter Garten, I think it's in English, Enchanted, no, not Enchanted Forest, Secret Garden. Secret Garden. And I started to color out the first page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it took me so long. Not because it's it's intricate or or too much or, or something. Because every time I, I sat down to color I was struggling with myself. You could you could do so much. You could you could read a book. You could, as I said, learn a language. You could do something useful with a purpose. And you're sitting down and coloring out books. It's so it's nonsense. You don't have you you have nothing in your hands after a lot of time, after hours and hours of work. The only thing you can say is, I colored out a page in a book. Yes, you can take it out of the book and frame it and maybe gift it to someone, but hmm, it's not really a pur purpose. It's not really useful. And then I, yes, we can say I became not burned out and, and not, I didn't have a depression or something, but Let's say I was ill for for a long time and I needed something to just come down and relax. And then I hold uh, I I mm, took the book again and I started to color out just without searching for a purpose. And it was like a therapy for me. It sounds for some of you maybe silly or I don't know yeah you can think what you want you I think you should try it if you have a stressful life or problems in your life in your private life or in your work life and you can't change something or you you have to wait for something to change because you can't take an impact on something and you just have to live with it or to if you experienced something where what what was very hurting or you are, you have to to come over it i don't know there are so many there are so many reasons why you should use use this this way to i don't know yes relax or i don't know how you want to say it it would be easier for me to say it in german but we know it's an english speaking podcast <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I should sound smarter <laughs> on German, in German, but it's okay. It's not about being smart here. Um, and not, I don't want to say you, you don't have to change your life or your lifestyle. Uh, just color out books and everything will be fine. No, I did change something, but it was hurting me to change something in my life. But I... I had to I had to work with this pain or with these thoughts and yes I I do pray I believe in God I'm a religious teacher okay a religion teacher but that's not all it I I needed more 
yes, I have friends and I talk with my friends and they were very nice and kind and that was very important for me. But then in my flat again, I had to do th something and I didn't want to only think over and over and over again how bad something is or how sad or how was it right, was it wrong. So and then in, in these moments I took my book and started out to color. And because I uh, colored a bit the last weeks, I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you th this hobby. Maybe some of you are also uh, are coloring out books. And I want to show you the Joanna Bessford books and another one, which is special for me. Uh, maybe you want to buy them or just, I don't know, <laughs> uh, maybe you're interested in what I'm doing besides knitting. These books are very intricate. They are especially for adults. For children, the pictures are too small and too, have too much detail um, to color it out without going over the lines. <clears throat> And now I know a lot of people, and especially a, a dear friend of mine, and he's a guy who colored out um, books when he had a rough time in his life. He didn't color out such feminine books. You know, there are also ones for men interest, <laughs> architecture or, uh, you know, there are illusion books or how they're called. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a lot, you don't, you only need a book and some pens or pencils and you can start. It's not about being perfect, it's not about it's not about reaching in a goal you you can you can do what you want you can paint leaves in pink and in blue if you want to it's not about it's not about the the goal or the purpose or the result at the end it's about the process in this case it's really about the process in knitting you can put a focus on the process but to be honest we all want the project at the end you wouldn't knit only straight four meters only stockinette because of the process. You want to have a project at the end. And sometimes it's not the right it's not the right way for me, especially maybe for you it's different, but it's not the right technique to free your mind. Let's say it in this way. Now I'm sharing it, but normally these books are in my shelf. No one sees it. It's just for me, just for relaxation. No. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and I love it. I have all her books and until now I only colored in her first one. It's a kind of my uh, perfectionism. It's a problem I have. I have all her books. She has Enchanted Forest, Lost Ocean, uh, Magical Jungle. And now I ordered and I will start it this season because it's silly to wait until I have finished this to start the next one. It's so silly, but that's me, <laughs> okay? She has a Christmas coloring book. It came out on the 25th or 6th of October and I immediately bought it. Um, I don't know the English title. There's a US and a UK version. Mein wundervolles Weihnachtsfest and in, in English maybe it's called Joanna's Christmas or something. Search on Amazon and you will find it. Uh, I didn't color out, but I want to show you the pictures. And in this in this book, often, no, 
every page is only printed on one side and this is the back side you can color this pattern but the main the main picture to color out is on this side oh no i have to <coughs> oh, i'm sorry and there are oh, now in english again i don't know now let me see if you can see it there are holes that you can not cut it out rip it out and frame it or use it as a Christmas gift I think it's yes maybe some people would say oh you're such a fool it's so kindish do you say childish you're acting like a child when you color out these books you are old enough to know that's not useful and it's, it's so stupid and you have to work and you have to study and you have blah blah blah. I, d I don't live for working or for studying. I also study and I also work and I also do, do useful and practical things and I want to reach goals. Not Sure. But it's not the only thing in, in my life uh, which fulfills me. No, it doesn't fulfill me at all. And I think we should change our lifestyle. So many people are ill and stressed and burned out and have depression and are searching for the pretty things in life. And I think especially our knitting community can understand how important it is to be surrounded by creative and nice things. And I think it heals you or it keeps you healthy. People who don't have hobbies like this, other people work with wood or acrylic or oil colors or they are drawing with pencils and or graphics. Everyone, I think, in my opinion, needs an area in his private life to be creative and to let it flow, yes? Maybe it sounds it sounds hippie or silly or crazy, but I experienced it and it made me healthy. There are other things I also did and I also um, thought about and practiced. Especially friends are very, very important to be healthy or to become healthy. But it's one, one part of our lives, okay? There's work, there are friends, family. And then for me, a very big part of my life, I can't let go. I, I really need every day a uh, time to be creative in different ways. Yes, in different ways. Okay, and the last coloring book I want to show you uh, because it's seasonal and I told you that this is my all-time favorite Christmas story. It's a Charles Dickens Christmas Carol themed book, Escape to the Past. And it's more. I like it. <laughs> and I colored out only two and a half pages. Okay. I don't know which house it is. From Mr. Cratchit or maybe it's Mr. Cratchit or his or Scrooge Scro Scrooge's nephew. This is Scrooge and Marley. The no, <laughs> English word again. The, you know, <laughs> Scrooge didn't change it after seven years uh, of Marley being dead. And some people called him Scrooge Scrooge and some people called him Marley. And there are always quotes out of the book. And here is, bah, 
Humbug. I don't know how to say it in English. Hamburg? Hambug? <laughs> bah, Humbug. He doesn't like Christmas. Okay, these are three of my coloring books. I enjoy and this one I will enjoy soon and I have a lot more. <laughs> I have all the Joanna Basford books and I think she's the queen of the coloring books. She is definitely the queen. Okay. Mm. And now I have to make a decision. No, we will use, we will no, no, no. We will um, go over to the word of the day and then I will decide about our knit along. The word of today is Adventmarkt. Um, word by word translation Advent Market. In, I don't know if it's in whole Europe, but in Austria and in, in Germany, in the Advent, in the time before Christmas, we differ here. It's Advent, Christmas, Christmas time, okay? Um, in the Advent we are waiting for Christmas and then it's Christmas time. We also have Advent songs and Christmas songs, you know? But that's just a side note. <clears throat> Advent markets are starting here next week and then the week uh, after next week. And you can drink punch. Do you say punch? I think so. And candy cane and um, roasted nuts and I'm, I'm searching all the English words now. You can uh, buy handmade things, mostly hand knits or uh, self-made paper and books or Christmas decoration and I will put some photos here that you can see how we celebrate the Advent. I'll be home for Christmas You can count on me Please have snow And mistletoe And presents on the tree Christmas Eve will find me where the love light And waiting for Christmas. Many people are buying the Christmas presents on uh, Advent markets because you only get these things in on those markets and one time a year. Uh, Mostly these things are very traditional or even handmade, regional or seasonal. And the best thing uh, on Edwind markets is the food. <laughs> you know, the apple in the oven, how do you say it? When you put a filled apple in the oven and eat it with vanilla sauce. Oh my gosh, it's so tasty. <laughs> Yes, and cookies and um, cotton candy, you can get all those nice and delicious things. Often there are choirs singing or bands playing Christmas songs and it's very cold and it's wonderful. And I'm looking forward to go to all those nice advent markets. I have some advent markets I go every year. Some are in Lower Austria where I live and uh, some are in Vienna. Oh my gosh, I will show you some photos from my most favorite advent markets and then you can decide what you like more. <laughs> but Vienna is, you know, Vienna is so historical, traditional and wonderful and pretty and with this um, um, setting it's even more romantic uh, when it's cold and the snow and and the Christmas songs and all those people snuggled up in their hand knits, maybe. 
and eating, I don't know, chestnuts or cotton candy. Okay, word of the day, Adventmarkt. I will put, uh, or I will have put, or I will put now, <laughs> I don't know, some pictures of our advent markets here. And now I have to decide how I call our knit along and I think I will call it ba -ba 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 -ba, Advent along. Because for me it's important to make a difference between Advent and Christmas. These times are different because in Advent we are waiting. Advent is in English arrival or arrive. In German we say Ankunft, someone is coming, <laughs> and Christmas is here already and we are selling, celebrating our new king, okay? And Advent is waiting for, for him to come. It's totally different. Okay, but we are mixing it up and it's okay and we are eating uh, Christmas candy and hearing Christmas music already in Advent and it's okay and I'm doing it also, but... Um, there's one thing we wouldn't do in in Europe. You do in the US, for example. You're putting the... So, I'm sorry, I had to make a break and getting Benny out of the other room. He was locked, not locked, but I put him in the kitchen to, to have a quiet time. And now I have him here on my lap. So, I was going to say there's one thing, for example, um, we wouldn't do in Europe, you do in, in the US. Because of our, um, um, because we differ between Advent, oh no, he wants to eat my book, Advent and Christmas, we wouldn't put the Christmas tree on in Advent. We do it on the, um, on Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve, but not earlier. We wouldn't do this, never, ever, ever. I don't, I don't know one family who is putting up the Christmas tree earlier than one day before Christmas Eve. Maybe there are some, but I don't know them. <laughs> okay, but I wouldn't say it's bad or not right. It's just our tradition, yes? And it's because of the difference between Advent and Christmas. But when I see your Christmas trees all already in Advent, I'm, I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> because it's such a short time, the Christmas time. Only in, in the church, these, uh, there are two weeks of Christmas time. But the most people have enough of Christmas on New Year's Eve. My Christmas tree always is in my flat till, uh, oh my gosh, how do you say this feast? The 6th of uh, January, the Heilige Drei Könige, Epiphania. And then I will put him away. But it's so such a short time. We are, And that's why we will call our knit along Advent along, because of the pleasant anticipation in Advent. We enjoy, we enjoy waiting for Christmas because the anticipation is the main thing that makes us happy. Isn't it like this? Okay, I think you maybe want to see... My hair is a mess, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe you want to see Benny. And I will put the camera down that you can see him. Yes, <laughs> there he is. Hey, Benny. Sh look here, show. Show my Show my Okay, now you... See, he's still here and we are good friends. Mm. Although he is naughty sometimes. But the most times he is so cute. <laughs> okay. He's a bit, a tiny little bit tired. Normally he wouldn't sit that quiet on my lap. Hmm. Okay, now I hope... I will come to to editing soon. I want to put it out to you today. You had to wait so long and I want to start the needle long. Oh, the rules for the needle long. I will open a thread. Yes, a thread in our Ravelry group. When if you want to join our needle long, you have to, you have to join our group. And I think we should 
Yes, I'm a Christian, and for us Christians, Christmas time is going to the 6th of um, January. So it's that that will be our deadline. Yes, bite in my hand. I like this. <laughs> uh, we will start um, right after opening the thread. So from today till the 6th of January, we will have, uh, but Advent along wouldn't be right in January. Hmm. That's not right. <laughs> no. Then I s let's say our Advent along goes until Christmas. <laughs> I'm just watching because I want to have my hand not be heard. <laughs> okay, Advent along till Christmas. That yes, yes. Let's do the let's do it this way. <laughs> From now until the twenty fifth. Okay, until the twenty fifth of December, we will have our Advent along. I don't know the price yet. I will. I think about the price. I think it will be yarn. I think it will be yarn, but I have to choose the yarn. Everyone can enter. You can double poly dip if you, for example, you're um, taking part of on the 12 Socks of Christmas from Love Suckwell podcast. You can put your sock there and in my call and you can win also the prize. I'm not that strict. Okay, from now until 25th of December, Advent along. And what can you enter in our knit along? Everything, everything what is related to pleasant anticipation for Christmas. You can, it can be um, Christmas gifts you knit, can be Christmas or Advent. Christmas related yarn, Christmas related um, patterns or your Christmas movie knits for example. I love to knit besides watching uh, during watching Christmas movies. It's it's not it's not difficult to be able to enter something. The only thing I I I want to know when you're entering a project in our knit along why it's Advent or Christmas related and how does it help you to wait for Christmas and to make the time short <laughs> of waiting for Christmas. Okay, I will open the thread, to, uh, thread today, the thread, <laughs> the thread today and I think I can put the episode out today. We say bye. Say bye, Benny. Bye. <laughs> and I'm happy to Read from you soon. Bye-bye.